Let's talk about some of the speakers at Mike Lindell's summit this year. As always, I highly recommend you watch it yourself because the misinformation and falsehoods are absolutely hilarious, and I do not cover every single thing they say. I do recommend watching it as a comedy. David Clements went on and basically just advertised his movie. That's really, in my opinion, all he was there for. Seth Keschel complains about election results, how it didn't go as he predicted, so he thinks there's fraud, lost his job because of hit pieces, calling him out for his involvement in Trump misinformation. Mike Lindell talks about how regulation exists that was trying to help recovering addicts, and Trump wanted to give money to religious treatment programs. Give the money to Jesus. Mike Liddell also talked about his time with crack. Clint Curtis came on as the token Democrat, says 70% of Democrats don't trust election counting, says they've seen the polling, but of course doesn't, you know, share any of that polling with the, with the class. Uh, then says a Republican company owner told him that electronic voting machines weren't to stop voting fraud, but to do it. Says he warned another group and they asked why they didn't do it first. Again, no proof of that. Says both sides of the problem, we need paper ballots. Complains the media doesn't give him coverage. He said more, but I think it encapsulates the things he pushed. Again, watch it yourself. Uh, next was Tina Peters. Uh, nothing new if you haven't if you've heard her story before. If you haven't, she does talk a little bit about it on live stream. Long story short, there's claims including her stealing a man's identity in a plot to violate local election security. All sorts of crazy stuff. She advertises a movie as well. You thought this would be a pillow grift. Apparently everyone's grifting. She's currently fighting seven felonies and three misdemeanor indictment. She said some people hug her, so others glare. Said there's more on her side than against, which just isn't true if you look at actual polling. And complains that globalists are trying to take over the world. Just, you know, gotta throw that one in there. Then they introduce Mike Gableman as a former Wisconsin Supreme Court justice and former special counsel to investigate the 2020 election. The name sounded familiar, so I checked on it, and there is an ethics complaint filed saying he harassed public officials and repeatedly lied in court during a taxpayer-funded election review. And behind me is a statement from a Wisconsin senator about him and his special counsel. Things including, Yesterday was the last day of the regular 21-2022 Senate session, the last opportunity to finally provide some accountability to... Re a renegade, Michael Gableman, is out of control Office of Special Counsel. I petitioned the Senate to require an audit of the Office of Special Counsel, which received bipartisan support. But too many of my Republican colleagues choose to continue wasting $676,000 without any transparency, accountability, or mission. That's a, that's a bold claim. Uh, he talked about wanting to get rid of machines and says because uh, people say you can check paper ballots, then why not get rid of the middleman? He talks about his special counsel not having funding at first, complained newspapers ran stories saying he doesn't know how elections work, but then he kind of admits he doesn't know how the machines work. Uh, he complains that they ran a story on him uh, wanting reimbursement for buying food for a former attorney general from Kansas. He claims it was in relation to the special counsel election investigation. Uh, he said he gets called out for wasting money. He said we can study flies, but not afford counting paper ballots. He repeats the Trump statement, they aren't coming after me, they're coming after you, makes me think he's worried about charges in relation to his special counsel coming at some point. Uh, he says that no one is allowed to know how election machines works and wonders if we are going through the end days. Gotta love it. Next is Marilyn Todd, introduced as a mother and an auditor. Big tip, if someone has to be introduced as a mother, and it's used like a job title, especially in a political setting, generally that's a good sign they have nothing else of value to contribute other than that they didn't use birth control. So I looked her up. First article was from uh, 2022, her complaining about 2020 election still, saying she sent evidence, the person that responded to her saying that they didn't see any evidence and just walking away from her. As expected, when she gets talking, her focus is on being a mom, being arrested, ostracized, what about the kids, talking more about moms. She moved to Florida to escape New Hampshire. Three years ago, she didn't even know we had state representatives, but thinks she's figured all parts of New Hampshire out after knowing nothing about the elections. Now she wants to tell people how to fix them. 
which is yet again a recurring theme. There's a recurring theme how these people go from not knowing how things work to an immediate misunderstanding of how things work, pushing election conspiracies and believing they know more than experts. Dunning-Kruger. But not just her in general. Mike Lindell as well likes to talk about not being interested in politics before Trump. You see it all throughout MAGA. You especially see it when Mike Lindell talks technology. He has no idea about technology. He learns about one new thing about technology and goes off the rails thinking he's an amazing expert. And it's predicted that that's what he's going to do tomorrow involving AI. Former state Senator Patrick Kolbeck. Not familiar with him, but former got my attention, so I looked him up. He has criticism in the past for being Islamophobic, arguing against tax increases while calling his $72,000 salary fixed income, which updated some lower, which upset some lower income residents in his state. Uh, he hit his state term limit for senator, ran for governor, and got 14% of the vote in the primary. Yeah. In 2020, he was a certified poll challenger and made challenges that the voting machines were connected to the internet, therefore they could be manipulated, and a judge said there was absolutely no evidence, so there you go. He helped Mike Lindell make his documentary, Absolute Proof, which was just election misinformation. In 2021, he called for a Michigan audit like the failed Arizona audit. He was in a rally and called it a spiritual battle. Compare the 2020 election to the persecution of Jesus. And of course, of course, has a book on sale to talk about all of this. So what did he talk about today? He begins with how smart he is. Uh, ran against someone because he wanted to stop them lying. God provides. And he's just done. Really quick, he's done. Uh, Laura Loomer speaks. Um, Laura Loomer's always in fights if you've ever followed her. She's been arguing with Kanye West people, Marjorie Taylor Greene, basically everyone. You can check her Twitter, see that yourself. She's recently physically been with Trump. She calls out Republican cowardice, calls out DeSantis for locking Florida down. Calls out Comcast for blocking her campaign. I don't know, maybe spam from the way she words it. Uh, calls for election lawsuits instead of tweets. Says there aren't two parties. Claims a Republican stole the election from Trump. This is hilarious. This is why she's kicked out of all Republican spaces. Uh, she blames Republicans more than Democrats. Um, she says that the RNC doesn't think the election was stolen. Trump's people don't think the election was stolen. We have a part of why he's being indicted and we have the evidence. Um, Sharona Bishop got introduced as America's mom. Remember what I said earlier? She was the campaign manager for Lauren Boebert's primary. She's mad about gay marriage because she's a married mom. She went off on an anti-transgender rant, called it a trans demonic ideology in classrooms, complained about a battering ram to her front door. That was because she got raided in relation to the Tina Peters charges. And honestly, I think this is a good stopping point. Because at this point, they moved on to a movie. Um, since they moved on to a video and stopped having speakers, let's end off mine. This is kind of what I expected. As I said, it's just going to be things we've heard before. A bunch of rambling. Tomorrow's probably going to be the really funny part.